In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, convert what we call a boundary search drawing into a boundary line work drawing. And I think I have at least one, maybe two other videos that show you how to do this, but uh, it's a process that involves some art, not just science. And um, in, in this video, <clears throat> I'm going to focus primarily on the tie lines. So in my other video, um, at least one of my other videos on this process, I, I, I focus on the, the subject parcel line work. But in this case, uh, I'm able to hold the record deed line work. You don't always get to do that, but in this case, it, it worked out. Uh, but the tie lines are going to be really important. Uh, in this boundary because I have a, a I have a parcel that's uh, that's deeded with a bunch of deeded adjoiners so uh, none of this area right here has ever been mapped so we've got a map to the south and uh, a map at this intersection here that kind of boxes us in but uh, the tie lines that we show in the in the line we're drawing uh, and then label on the book on the boundary survey exhibit and the record of survey are going to be really important and so I, I thought it would be a good video to do I actually don't know if I'm gonna I'm gonna record this I don't know if I'm gonna publish it yet uh, but if you're watching it on YouTube I decided to publish it um, so you know some of this is is the what we're gonna what you're gonna see in this video is some of the I don't know what to call it the higher level stuff um, that that we do as a boundary surveyor and it, it's something I really want to get my folks more comfortable with. So I, I thought I would record this for some of my texts. Um, so we'll, we'll see if it makes the cutting board. Um, <clears throat> all right, so this is my client's parcel. Uh, it's a vacant corner lot uh, outside of Sacramento. And uh, I have the, the parcel here. So uh, this is actually, um, there's a deed take here. So the, uh, the city... Uh, it's actually the city of Elk Grove came in and they took this piece right here. Uh, this this um, this shape right here. They came in and took uh, as part of a, a right away take there. So so we we basically had that the actual deed runs if you if you read the deed land description it runs out to the center uh, to the center lines. Um, so you can see these neighboring deeds actually go out to the to the center of the road. It's not quite the exact center. This is a section line. This is a section line. So this is in the public land survey system. And so our deed, like these neighboring deeds, actually run out to the, the fee ownership at one point ran out to the section lines. But the city of Elk Grove has come in and taken some takes here, right away takes in fee, right? So uh, what we're left with is this blue line. And, and as I mentioned, uh, I'm able to hold the, the deed measurements uh, they fit well. They fit the fence as well. It's just the way the deeds were written that that happened to pan out. I may do another video where um, I show you guys how I assemble this search drawing and talk about how I determined that this that this deed this deed line work was was going to be valid. Now you'll notice, depending on where you put this deed to the south, there is a little bit of a of an overlap here. There's a one foot overlap. This is down in the creek. It's not a huge deal. I'm not surprised there's a one foot overlap. Um, so part of what I did in the search drawing was I, I tried to determine if there were gaps or overlaps. Now, the way the deeds are written, this, this deed is actually written to fit exactly with this deed. That's the way the deeds were written. I'm sure they were written that way on purpose. But in this case, I, I tried to examine an alternative interpretation holding this map to the south. And there is a little bit of an overlap there. And you're going to see... <clears throat> If I do a, I might do a, a, a second or a third video where I show how to annotate these tie lines we're going to do in this video, and you'll see we're going to show that potential overlap to a retracing surveyor and the way we annotate the tie lines. That's one of the reasons why this video is important. Okay, so the first thing I did was I took this line for our subject parcel here, and I, I just uh, so this is our boundary search drawing. This is this is as far as a lot of surveyors will take it. This is the uh, you know, just the record record deeds and maps placed on the monuments best fit. Okay, it's what some people would call a record boundary. <clears throat> okay, but we we go one step further here at RH as I think you should in most most boundary surveys and, and we've resolved the boundary. So this is our search drawing. We always keep a copy of this for our records. It's got the maps as blocks and the deeds as blocks and the monuments. <clears throat> okay, but in this case, 
uh, the, the drawing that we use for our work products has uh, the cleaned up line work. That's what we call a, a boundary line work drawing or resolved boundary drawing. Okay, so I just went ahead and pasted that subject parcel line in here. Uh, it's it's going to match the overall D dimensions minus this right of way take from the city uh, to the city of, of Elk Grove. Okay, but that's not the focus of the video. The focus of the video is how do we come up with these tie lines that we're going to show on our boundary survey exhibit and on our on our record of survey. So um, all of our deeds are kind of based off this uh, northwest corner of this section. So this is a section corner here. There's a quarter corner, north quarter corner over here. Um, or it might be down. It might be down another 1320. I can't remember. Um, Let's just see where that quarter is at. Oh, you know what? That's actually, uh, that's this is 2640. That's the other section corner there. <clears throat> okay, so all these deeds are, are, are built off uh, these two section lines here. So this would be the north line of our section and the east line of our section. So the first question is how do we establish that? Okay, this uh, intersection here has been completely redone. Uh, there is a new roundabout here. They blew out the section corner and then the surveyor that actually uh, set monuments to perpetuate that section corner. I talked to the county surveyor. They believe he's got a bust. All his monuments are two feet too far north, which is fantastic. Um, so I wasn't able to use his, his record of survey uh, post-con to get these section lines in and the section corner has gone. But thankfully, uh, Mark Thomas came in here and their local survey firm and they did a pre-con um, record of survey for this roundabout and uh, tied out the section corner monument and I was able to find a couple things on that map. So I was able to find um, this uh, monument here and this monument here Civil Cross Monument, um, and I was able to, to put that map in there. And then down here, I've got this is a parcel map, um, and this is a, a subdivision map, and I was able to find, uh, uh, I got a, a monument here uh, right at a fence corner, and I got a centerline monument here that I had to dig out. Um, I looked for these other mods. These, these mods are actually way back in the yard, believe it or not, the fences out here. So I didn't get in these people's yards, but I looked for this one, this one, and this one couldn't find it, but I found this one. I found this one. Um, and then up here, uh, there's a monument at a fence corner here. I think what's happened is the, um, there's been a dedication here that hasn't been used yet, a right-of-way dedication. Um, and you can see it's off a little bit. Um, in fact, we can measure that. So let's see here. So I'm off eight tenths north south, and it looks like uh, that's at a, at a so there was a 15 foot dedication in here. So I I'd love to fit a little better than eight tenths. Uh, I don't, uh, but I've got some other checks on it. Um, so we'll look here. I can show you how we, we do at that intersection. But so that's the worst fit there. Um, but then you come down here. If you run this center line out, extend the center line out. I come down here and, and I hit this other monument on this other map super close. So that, that's a very close uh, difference. You can just take a look at that actually if you want. So that's three tenths. Um, and I've got another monument up here. Um, I got another monument up here that we hit pretty close. Uh, so four tenths uh, east west there, right? Uh, but we hit really good. Uh, let's see here. We hit really good north south. Oh. So we're within two tenths north south, right? Um, and so you can see this, you know, this monument's west of the line and this monument's, um, you know, this monument's south of the line. 
So it just, you know, there's, there's, we're kicking around a half a foot to a foot out here. This is an old area. You know, there weren't a lot of surveys. Um, so uh, what I ended up doing was uh, I held this monument and this monument on this map and ran the center line out and just kind of checked into these two monuments. I fit within two or three tenths. That's probably as good as I can expect out here. Um, I would have tied some more monuments on this map, uh, but this was done in 07, 08, right before the Great Recession. And I don't think this was an RCE doing a sub. I don't think he ever finished setting his mons. Um, I looked for, I don't know, at least four other monuments in this map that were fairly easy to find, and I didn't find any of them. So that's the only one I found. So uh, I suspect that these monuments didn't get set. And that's fairly common with subdivision maps from from right around that 2000, 2000, 2007, 2008 era, at least in this part of California. <clears throat> okay, so why is that important? So that uh, map, if you pull this out, actually gives me this east line of the section and north line of the section. It also gives me this really important line, which is the west boundary of lot five. So our deeds are actually all portions, meets and bounds portions of lot five of a very old subdivision map. It's what we call an antiquated subdivision. Okay, and so this map's really important because it kind of creates the bounding square that I'm gonna, uh, that I use to make sure there weren't uh, gaps and overlaps in our deeds, and there actually is. There's a gap, so we've got this one foot overlap here, and then there's a, a foot to two foot uh, overlap on this line, but it it it, it pans out because so the deeds, uh, if you if you put the deeds together the way they're supposed to, this gap goes away, right? And then uh, there's a long-standing fence here. Uh, that's right on uh, the deed dimension across the top. So uh, in my mind, that means that the excess or the gap is going to get shared between these two parcels. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw this fence has been here a long, long time, decades. I'm not going to throw it out. It's right on the deed line. But you know, I did my, I did my homework, and we, we kind of dealt with the resolved boundary matrix, and we figured that out. So, anyways, this is an important map, and this is the map that most of our tie lines are going to come from. Let me put that back. Now, I've got this map in, and so what I can do is just kind of check, hey, how close does this map fit with the with the parcel map that I'm going to use uh, for most of my tie lines? And so you can come in here and see, all right, so here's the position of that section corner on the Mark Thomas pre-con, pre-construction record of survey. Um, and here is the location of, let's see, let's make sure I grab the right one. Yep, the location of that section corner from the parcel map to the south that we tie down and we can pull a dim between those. You can see it's almost all in the east-west direction, two tenths. I mean, for what I've got out here, I'm super happy with that, two tenths. Um, so that's a, that's a good check. That makes me feel like I have the section corner and the section lines in the right spot. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we wanna, we wanna add some tie lines. So I wanna show uh, the east line and north line of the section um, as I've tied them out from this map. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, our boundary tie lines layer. And I'm going to just start now. Just because I think it's going to create problems for now, um, I want to move this map out of the way. Okay, so I'm just going to move it up for now. Okay, so this gives me a little cleaner line work to work with. Okay, so... Um, now, we've got to be careful because we've got some other deeds in here. So let me move this out of the way. So that's our actual deed okay, that went out to the section lines. And then we've got the, the this is the city parcel right away take that came out. Okay, I'm just pulling these out because I don't want to grab the wrong lines when I'm doing my ties. So I'm just going to, so there's the take to the city. Okay, so when you put these two shapes together, you get the blue line that, that becomes this line. This is our subject parcel. So it's uh, our subject parcel is this D minus this right away take. Okay, but what I really want to show here, the point of the video is these right away takes. So we're gonna we're gonna draw them now. So I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna hold the section corner position per this map. And then what I would like to do is I'm gonna come down. Now I'm purposely gonna put a break in my line here because I'm gonna pull a tie over to that mon. And then I'm gonna go uh, down to here. Now there was a monument here exposed at the surface but this was a super busy road and i wasn't going to risk my life um, and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to this spot 
Okay, now I'm going to put a break in my line here. Um, let me make sure I snap to the right spot because I'm going to pull a tie down to that mod. Okay, then I'm going to come all the way over here because I've got that mod there. Put a break in my line. And then I'm going to come down. Okay, Tiki, all the way down to here. Okay, now this is for the sub map to the south. I want my map, which is to the north. So my my map that I'm that I'm holding is the one to the north. I'm hoping I can get an intersection on this line. Yeah, it's not going to give me an intersection. So I'm just going to snap there. It's probably because these need to be flattened. Let me see if I can snap back to that. All right. Okay, so I've got a monument to the north there, and then I'm going to do that one more time. Okay, and I'm going to go down uh, to this other mod here. Okay, now I don't have a, I don't have this monument that I found is uh, not exactly on my line, so I'm going to draw a perpendicular there, and I'm going to shorten that. Okay, and here's why this line is oh let's get it let's get rid of the z okay so let's see all right so that that is that's out more than i want that's out of half a foot so i got to decide what to do there i might actually um i think i'm going to hold them on there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kink i'm going to kink this line okay let me make sure I get to the center there. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to hold this monument. Okay, so there's going to be a slight angle break uh, from this mod to this mod because I don't want to pull that up a half a foot. That's too much. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here now. So now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to draw a line from my monument. Okay, and I'm going to go... You can see this starts to get a little dicey. I'm going to just hold this right here. Okay, so that's the line I want. They're super close. I'm going to pull this away. Nope, that's the line I want. So now I'm going to pull this sub map out for now. Okay. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to draw this tie line up to the monument, perpendicular. Okay. All right, so now, you know, I'm not going to show this. My distance from here to here isn't going to be exact because I found this monument slightly offline, right? So my distance is going to be longer, but I'm going to hold them on just like I did down here. Okay, now, uh, the next thing we want to do is we're going to draw a tie line now from this endpoint over to this monument, 500. Okay, and I think that's, that's everything I want. Now, just as a check, I think that's everything I want. You can pull this up, and you can see now got an extra line in there. I don't know how I did that. You can see now these are our ties, right? Mon to point, right? This is like a calc point or dimension point. Perpendicular tie up. Okay, and then I come over to Mon. Okay, and then I come over to that center line Mon that I didn't want to tie because I didn't want to risk my life. So we've got another one here. We're going to just go. I put an endpoint in. I should have an endpoint in there. Okay. Okay, that doesn't look right to me. So we're going to check that in a minute. Something looks off there. Let's go perpendicular for now. So this may just be a difference between where I found the monument and where the record position is. So let's measure that di difference. That's 1.3 feet. That's quite a bit. So I may need to take a closer look at that. We'll do that in, in a few minutes. Okay, then I come up here. To the section corner, okay. 
Okay, so let me undo that, put that map back in place. Alright. So let's go see what we got going on here. So here's our monument. Okay, and let's see, I broke my tie line there. So let's see if we've got this endpoint where this lock corner is supposed to be. Nope. So what I'm trying to do here, folks, is I'm trying to just see how far I found this monument from the actual lock corner. I feel like it's not giving me the true endpoint there, but it says it is. So let's see. That doesn't look like it's... So I'm just zeroing out that line. All right, so it's six tenths. So it's it's a ways off, you know, and that's outside of my comfort zone, <laughs> right? Now I remember I was there. I I I found the uh, monument. It was a it was a iron pipe with no cap. So I'm gonna have to check the check the photos on that one. So that's too too far away to call the monument on. So I'm actually gonna um hold to the center of the mon. Let me try and node. <clears throat> All right. So it the lines should be perpendicular. It's diagonal like that because I found the monument off, right? So you'll notice north south it's good. But it, it's off. Um, it's off east west from where it should be. And uh, and I may have to go in and look at that map. So there's that. There's that difference. <clears throat> okay. So I got to go in and take a little closer look at that mom. But we'll throw that tie line in for now. Okay. Same thing up here. You know, I've got a, a mom that's good for distance here. But man, it's you know, I got it to half. It's eight tenths south, right? Um. Which is, you know, I don't love that, but this is this is an older area. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and draw a line from this monument. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, I want to make sure I get this bearing right because it may not be exactly perpendicular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the line. I'm going to trace it there, but then I'm going to move it to the monument. Okay, and then I'm going to trim it out. Okay, so I'm holding the same bearing as the actual north line of the map, but I'm going to hold this monument. I'm going to say, hey, I think this monument marks the north line. And i got to look into this a little bit. I'm going to double-check the map because I did find it on the outside edge of this. So there is an old fence here. So there, it looks to me like there was a right-of-way dedication that just hasn't been used yet, a 15-foot right-of-way dedication. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. But for now, I've got to tie. So i got to decide here, right? If this point was close enough, to the line, I would just hold the line and call a point on, but it's not. It's 8 tenths south, right? So I, it's too far. I can measure better than that, right? So I'm going to show my tie line to the actual monument. And what that means is, this is really important, you'll see this some more. When when I draw the distance from the section corner down to this north boundary of this map, my distance is going to be longer than the distance on the map, more than likely, right? Because my line, my found them on south. So this distance will be longer to the section corner, and my distance from this monument to this center line of this road will be shorter than on the map because the monument is south. And we'll, we'll, we'll see that when we go to do the actual labeling. All right. Okay, so I think we've got those lines in now. Uh, now, the, 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 the north line is a little easier. Uh, so uh, the wonderful city of Elk Grove, has paved this whole road and the county has not been able to get me any pre-con monument preservation. This road recently got repaved. So all these centerline monuments for this whole mile, uh, almost this whole mile, got smoked. Okay, And uh, I looked for the monuments across the street here. There were some sideline monuments um, that, I, that I was not able to find. Okay, This 507 is one of those monuments that's two feet too far north. 
Okay, so I'm just going to hold the record for this map. I'm going to hold this record section line. Okay, so I'm going to come over to this corner. Okay, um, and if I want, I could actually come down here all the way to the section corner, and I probably will. So I'm going to go ahead and add that tie line, and then we can show some overall distances across the top of the section uh, comparing uh, our map uh, to some other maps. We can see how close they are. Okay, So I don't mind that. I think that's a good idea to show that tie to that section corner. I might take it out. I might take it out later, but for now I'll leave it in. Okay, so we have this old subdivision map. This is lot 5, right? Our deeds of portion of lot 5. I've got this line here on this parcel map uh, that is the east line of five. Now, I looked into this. The old subdivision map comes all the way across the full length of the section with this row of lots. So, in theory, you'd have to come over here, establish this section line, and then check for excess or shortage and prorate among the old lots of the, of the subdivision to figure out where this east line is. I did not do that on this survey. Why didn't I do that? Now, there's a couple reasons why I didn't do it. First of all, uh, this is a pretty old map. It's been in for decades. This line is monumented, right? And there's a long-standing fence that falls really close to this. It's been in place for a long time. I am not going to prorate excess or shortage along this length and throw these monuments and this long-standing occupation out. I'm just not going to do that. I think it's silly, right? It's been there forever. It's been monumented. People have accepted these monuments. I'm going to hold the... Uh, the evidence on this map with the monuments I found in this long-standing occupation is the best evidence of this location of the uh, would be the west boundary of Lot 5. Now, if I was doing an ALTA survey for one of these parcels, I, I'd probably have to do some more work over here to figure out this section line and do the prorating because that could be an alternate, alternate solution, reasonable alternate solution, and I think you need to do that work potentially for an ALTA survey. But for what I'm doing... Um, you know, my, my deed starts here from this corner and goes south and uh, west. Um, my subject parcel doesn't even touch this line. Um, and I'm, I'm fairly, I'm 95% I'm confident that the, that the location of the west line of the old subdivision lot 5 per this map, this is as good as it's going to get. I don't think you're going to come up with a better answer there. Okay. So, and I'm not going to go a mile away and prorate some ancient subdivision map and then throw this line out eight feet. I'm just not going to do that. It doesn't make any sense. All right. So, the other line we can put in then is we can put in a tie line down this west boundary of lot five per this old sub map, right? And I'm going to just come all the way back down to my monument. I don't know if that worked. It did not work. Let's try it again. I'm going to come from here. Okay, I'm going to go all the way down to this monument. Okay. Alright, now when I take this out, you can see I've got my tie lines here that I want. So I've got the north boundary of the section, the east boundary of the section. I've got the west boundary of lot 5. I've got the south boundary of lot 5. Okay, but I broke it into pieces because I've got some mons. Right, and then we've got some ties we're swinging out to the mons, right? And those will, those will need a little more work. We'll do that in, the, in, a, in a different video or set of videos on the, the anno drawing that we're going to do. Because I think that will be an important piece of this. So now what I'm going to do, now that I've drawn those lines, is I'm going to um, copy those. So you could go edit copy, for example, and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say paste to original coordinates. Now I've got my tie lines in. Okay. Now, what I don't have here is it'd be nice to tie our boundary over. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go perpendicular on this one. I'm going to do an extension. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, extend that. Because we want to tie our subject parcel we want to tie our subject parcel um, to those section lines okay, and then we want to make sure we put that on the right layer so those that should be on the tie line layer Oop. okay now what I would do here is I would probably just copy this 
down. I want to hold that same bearing here. Okay. And then we'll uh, extend this out. Because okay, you got to remember, that could be slightly different um, than perpendicular. Okay, now here, I've got to, I got to make a decision that I think what I'm going to do, let me get on the tie line layer. So here, I'm not going to go perpendicular either. I'm going to, I'm going to come in and grab this line. Okay, and then I'm going to do an extension. Okay, and then on the same thing, I'm going to copy this up. Actually, these may not be the same exact bearing, so I'm going to do that again here. Make sure I get the end point there. So I'm just putting in some tie lines. These aren't in any, any map, but I'm putting some tie lines in so that, that I can pin down this subject parcel boundary to these section lines that we established, okay? Remember, we got monuments here and here and here. Okay, now I've got this other map floating over to the side, um, that, and I want to show that because it, it confirmed our section corner position was within two tenths. So what, I, what I'm going to do in the next video is we're going to add some tie lines for this map over here, the pre-con map for the roundabout, and then we're going to add some tie lines for our joiner deeds to, to, to show our joiner deeds. Okay, so I'll do that in a, in a separate video.